Hello and welcome to the lesson. Today we will start on a new topic known as public-private partnerships arrangements. The topic is in five sections. Number one, rationale and justification for public-private partnerships. Number two, establishment of public-private partnerships unit in the national treasury. Number three, contract stock project agreements, guidelines and standards. Number four, composition and role of PPP petition committee. Number five, establishment and role of PPP project facilitation fund. First of all, we will define the term PPP. Then in this first lesson, we will uh, study the rationale and justification of PPPs. Now, PPP, public-private partnership candidates, is a medium to long-term relationship between the public and private sectors. So learners, first of all, public-private partnership is any medium-term to long-term contract. First of all, it is a contract, and this contract is between the public and the private sectors, which involves the sharing of risks and rewards. It is a contract between the publics and the private sectors involving sharing of risks and rewards of multi-sector skills. Skills, expertise, multi-sector skills, expertise, um, we have and finance, and finance, and finance, and candidates, the objective is to provide or to deliver desired policy outcomes. <laughs> to do what? to deliver desired policy outcomes. That is one definition. The other definition of PPP, PPP can also be defined as a long-term contract between the private sector or private party and a government party or government entity for providing public asset or service. I repeat, public-private partnership is a long-term contract between a private party and a government entity. It is a long-term contract. Still here the word is common. A long-term contract between a private party and a government entity. And why should a private party and government entity have an agreement? The purpose is to deliver or to provide a public asset or service for providing a public asset contract for providing a public asset 
or service. Public asset or service. In which the private party bears the uh, significant risk and management responsibility and remuneration is linked to performance. So we all know that uh, it is the role of a government to provide public assets and services. But there are times when the government may choose to contract a private party, okay, to provide this public uh, uh, asset or public uh, service, then in return, the government compensates the private party as, as the private party bears all the risks and management responsibility of providing the public asset or service. Do you understand? Public-private partnership. It is a long-term contract between a private party and a government entity. This government entity could be the national government, the county government, the government department, uh, ministry, and so on. Private party could be a, 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 a private company, uh, a limited company, and so on. So that's the meaning of public-private partnership. We are now going to study the rationale. The rationale for PPPs. Rationale for PPPs. The rationale, the reason behind PPPs. Now, one reason could be budgetary, budgetary reasons. Budgetary reasons. Now, in traditional procurement method for infrastructure assets, the government is required to meet the cost of constructing the asset at the time of construction. And in PPP projects, construction is funded by a private sector either through a debt funding alone or more usually a mixture of debt and equity funding. So it is for budgetary reasons that um, uh, the government may opt to, 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 to provide public uh, assets or public services through uh, public-private partnerships. Another rationale is efficiency. Efficiency. The private sector is often considered to provide greater levels of expertise and efficiency when constructing and running infrastructure projects than the public sector. And the reasons for increased efficiency include greater innovation, a commercial approach to proven uh, to problem solving, it could be better uh, governance, it could be improved competition and efficient management. So that is another reason why government would opt for PPPs. PPPs, um, the public, uh, the private sector is uh, more, in practice, more efficient than government entities in providing infrastructure projects. Three, value for money. Value for money. Now, PPPs often uh, uh, offer better value for money than more traditional forms of procurement for various reasons. For example, in PPPs, risks are efficiently allocated to the party most able to manage them. Another reason for value for money is um, the process by which PPP projects are tendered encourages competition between buyers, bidders, and reduction in overall cost. There is competition in the uh, bidding process. Another reason for value for money could be uh, having to specify the, the service requirement in details. Right? 
forces the public sector to assess thoroughly the, the service needs. There is also the issue to do with the payment mechanism, which is predicted on the basis that the public sector only pays for the services applied to the required standard, and therefore ensuring uh, the agreed levels of service and maintenance throughout the term of the contract. You may also have another reason being that the assets are more intensively exploited. For example, additional revenues which are shared between the uh, public and, uh, and, and, and the private sector can uh, result from shared use of facilities and the sale of assets that could be redundant. So value for money is another rationale for PPPs, where the government um, enters into an agreement with the private sector to offer a, a public goods and public services, the, the PPPs offer value for money because of the reasons that I have given. There are also social and economic reasons. Social and economic reasons. Now, some governments introduce social and economic objectives in their PPP strategies. Okay? In, and um, uh, the, 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 the term uh, that is normally referred to as the pro poor PPPs, the pro poor PPPs have been used to demonstrate the capability of the model to address the needs of the socially and economically disadvantaged. But the challenge here is to ensure that such a, a group can afford to pay for the services from PPP projects. So there are some social and economic reasons behind PPPs. Five, sustainability, ability, development, reasons. Sustainability, development, reasons. Now, an emerging trend in PC, PPPs is the ability to challenge sustainable development issues posed by climate change. And PPPs through its package of assets, uh, finance, risk transfer, technology, uh, management skills and efficiency, offer a useful tool in addressing the challenges of climate change. So sustainability development uh, uh, reasons could also be the rationale, uh, rationale uh, for, uh, for PPPs. So we said there are budgetary reasons, efficiency, value for money, social and economic reasons, sustainability development. So these are reasons for PPPs. Then let's study the justification. Justification for PPPs. Justification. The first point is that... Um, is that on relieving pressure on government's budgetary requirements. Now, the private sector uh, financing essential infrastructure needs relieves the government the pressure of budgetary requirements because in PPP arrangement, the private sector may fund um, infrastructure projects. So they, 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 and therefore that relieves the government uh, the pressure to meet uh, budget requirements. Do you understand? Then uh, the other justification is related to inefficiencies. In efficiencies. PPPs can eliminate inefficiencies. The private 
sector can tackle in efficiency and respond more effectively to user demands than the government. And in, in many infrastructure sectors in the world, including uh, the, the upcoming or the transition economies, the problem is not one of expanding capacity, but making it more efficient. And uh, for that reason, PPPs have been uh, found to, um, to deal with inefficiencies in infrastructure development. Discipline is another reason or justification. The private sector imposes discipline on projects through the profit motive and ensures that project implementation is speeded up because PPPs, these are private, uh, in, in PPPs we have the private sector carrying out the projects. We know the motive behind industry is profit. And because of being driven by profit, private sector has a higher level of discipline as compared to the government. And therefore, the private sector imposes discipline on projects through the profit motive and ensures that project implementation, even for large-scale projects, is speeded up. Another point or justification is that the project finance structure is particularly suited to the environment found in some transition economies where risks and uncertainties, both economic and political, are much higher. And this structure, the, uh, the project finance structure, mitigates risk amongst many participants mitigates risks among many participants. Mitigates risk among many participants through the employment of various financial instruments such as escrow accounts or or syndicated credit facility. Syndicated credit facility. Facilities. So these are justification for PPPs. Justification for PPPs. Now that will mark the end of the lesson where we defined, began by defining the term public-private partnership, and we said that public-private partnership is a long-term contract between a private party and a government entity for providing a public asset or service. We went further to explain or discuss the rationale behind PPPs. We gave budgetary reasons, efficiency, a value for money, PPPs deliver value for money. There are also social and economic reasons and sustainability development reasons. In ending, we've uh, discussed the justification for public-private partnerships. Uh, the first point is in relation to uh, budgetary uh, requirements. Uh, PPPs relieve government the pressure of budgetary requirements. There is also the issue on uh, inefficiencies inefficiency. We say that the private sector can tackle inefficiencies and respond more effectively to user demands compared this uh, the private sector compared to, to government entities. Then uh, uh, the private sector uh, because of um, the profit motive, because of the profit motive, we've seen that uh, the private uh, sector and shows that project implementation is uh, done faster. Project implementation is speeded up. Then lastly, there is the issue on mitigation of risks among many participants through escrow accounts or financial instruments, 
and true employment of uh, syndicated credit facilities and so on. So that will mark the end of the lesson. I can give you one question uh, related to what we have learned. It may not be exactly, but I want you to uh, I want you to use what the knowledge you have gained today to outline. outline eight benefits of public-private partnerships. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.